Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time visiting us, thank you. Consider hitting that subscribe button below, turn on the post notification bells. You know what to do. Today we are working on the 38 Plymouth, or rather parts of it. Uh, we're up here in the garage for the foreseeable future, so we can bring kind of piece by piece up here and work on it as my garage furnace turns on. You're kind of loud, but I like you. I'm just gonna wait until that's done. Alrighty, now that it's a little quieter in here, we have, this is the uh, passenger front uh, fender off the 38. And uh, you can probably see up front here, well, maybe you can't, you're a little too high. Um, let me move you, that's much better. Now, as you can see, we've got a dent or a kink here, and also one in the back. Mm. Um, kind of reminds me of the 52 with the doors, like someone tried to squeeze in an opening that was too narrow and put some dents in here. So that is going to be our primary uh, goal to fix is to push these back out, do the metal work and uh, get this a nice curve again. Otherwise the rest of the uh, panel itself looks pretty good overall. If we look at the back here where it ties into the running boards, I, I can't find another picture online um, using the Googles that shows this exact spot, but I think this area here has been replaced at an earlier point in the vehicle's life. I see what looks like uh, a couple of stitch welds in here, inch long stitch welds, no, no welding in here. Uh, this area over here, the paint is cracking. There's some pretty deep grinder marks in here. And it looks like it's, it just looks like it's been repaired by somebody else. Maybe these were replacement parts at one point in time earlier in the vehicle's life. Uh, because these corners and edges here look look pretty good. They don't look like they were welded or fabricated. Maybe if I got a better light, I would see. Um, but more importantly, let me turn this around again. And if we look at it again there, neighbor, we can see this metal is breaking and flimsy and just crumbling in my hands. And I can definitely see a separation in here. So, uh, is it quite possible this was cut off here? and replaced at a earlier point in time, that's possible. Are we probably gonna do it again? Because this side, this side isn't so bad. The driver's side is actually rusting and rusted through uh, in a few places. So we'll get to that later. So all in all, I think this is gonna be our bigger area to deal with other than those two dents. Also this plate here uh, is sort of uh, makes up a side of the engine bay. Uh, kind of a closure on the uh, driver and passenger side. There are four, one, two, three, four, five uh, bolts and nuts in here that are uh, rusted and have been soaking in penetrant for a few days. And that's got to come off. This really just needs to get cleaned up and repainted. Uh, we're going to use the Eastwood chassis black on the inside. Um, and probably we're going to use the Rhino liner, or the, sorry, the, the Raptor, uh, Raptor liner, um, under here, under all the wheel wells, uh, so we can get some good uh, protectant back on that after we uh, prime it and put a base coat on it, of course. Uh, but the bigger part is a guy could have been a little smarter and knocked off all this dirt and mud before he brought it up from the uh, shop. But that was not me. So, what I'm gonna do, since we are in the garage, we're not in a nice warm space all the time, uh, parts are gonna come and go from the garage to the shop, is I'm gonna try and do as much metal work uh, before I strip all the paint off of this thing. And then where I do need to take off paint, I'm just gonna do it uh, sparingly so that we can keep as much of the metal protected until I'm actually ready to take off the paint and prime it. Alrighty, third time trying to do this take. <clears throat> Make that fourth time, I think I'm losing my voice again. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is I'm taking my dead blow hammer, 
to try and hit out some of the larger dents to begin with before I go hit it with my hammer and dolly uh, because that's going to be great for more precise uh, finish work. But just to get some of the big dents out of here to begin with, I want to whack on it. Well, you can see without a lot of work, most of those dents have come back out pretty easily. This one here especially has come out very quickly. Uh, a little bit of a kink here. And then this dent here has come out probably 80%. Uh, if you can see, I've got a little bit of a low spot here, a little bit of a low spot here, uh, but those we can hit with the hammer and dolly. The big, big wave is out. So that's, uh, that's good, you know, just, I'm not getting the four pound sledgehammer out to beat on it. His dead blows, uh, while it'd be nice if they were a little more rounded on the edge, uh, they're working and they're working quite well. I may have to do something a little different here because I don't want to pound and bend in this, uh, this body line here. So I may have to figure out a different way to get this thing back in place. It's not much and possibly as I kick out the rest of the uh, dent here, It'll come in line, but it looks a little off right now, but uh, we'll see what happens once we actually get to uh, doing the finer metal work here. It would be really nice if I had one of those uh, sandbags. I could set the panel on and hammer on, uh, give me a lot better support, a lot better accuracy, but I don't, and here we are. One of the other things we've got a whole roll of in the car, thanks to the owner, is a roll of the welding that goes back on, and this should be a lot more pliable and bigger, uh, but what it is basically, it's a plastic, uh, you know, EPDM or some sort of pliable, uh, flexible rubber uh, cording like you might find in your upholstery, uh, but it's a plastic material um, with a tab on it that goes between two of your panels. So for this example, uh, there's a weld thing on here between the uh, body and the fender. So A, a little bit of a trim piece, and B, it helps guard against rubbing and chafing of the paint uh, as the vehicle's running. So uh, a bunch of this, that's trash, but I've got more. So I'm gonna leave this uh, section on now, the kind of the inner uh, engine bay, fender well, cover, divider thing, uh, whatever you wanna call it. I'm gonna leave it on because it's providing some structural stability right now. Uh, to keep the fender from twisting and warping and uh, getting all out of a skew up here on the stand. Uh, eventually it'll come off, especially when we're doing uh, prep for final paint because they are gonna be two colors like I mentioned before. But for now it's adding strength and stability to the fender as is so I can more easily work on it up here. Uh, so I'm gonna let these things sit for the moment. I think they're a whole lot better than they were. We've got more to do, of course. But I wanna take a look at this back area here where it mates up to the running board and see if indeed we're all rusted through or if it's multiple pieces or what the scoop is. Yeah, actually, oh yeah, I can see light through here. Yep, yep, oh. May have been partly to my doing too with the hammers. Hold on. Alrighty, now, as I was saying, we have holes and it's probably contributed to me hitting the, uh, the dents with a hammer, but if just that light little bit of hitting was causing this, yeah, I can see we're rusted all the way through here. You can, you can see my finger. Hi. So from the back side, yeah, I've got, Body line here. It's almost like this piece was welded on over what was left of the original metal. And now that I'm looking a little closer, I can see more grinder marks where this may have been two pieces uh, welded together and uh, ground down. So we may end up doing that again because there's nothing left saving here. And actually on the 
driver's side, uh, this, this back edge here was actually welded onto the cab of the vehicle uh, right in front of the front door. So that definitely tells me somebody has been here before and uh, we're gonna try and redo what they've done so it lasts another, how many years? Uh, yep, rough edge right here in the metal. So, maybe time for me to uh, get out the Sharpie, make a mark, and even worse, get out the grinder. Okay, so what I've done is put tape around this entire area here uh, for a couple of reasons. One, I wanna make a line to cut with my angle grinder. And two, I wanna have a point of reference with these hash marks of where it came off so when I go ahead and try and uh, create a new piece, I have these points of reference uh, to use in my template so that I can get it uh, a new piece created just as perfect as I can. And uh, then I guess we'll work on this top piece afterwards. This I should be able just to trace, uh, cut, and then tack weld in and then final weld in. Uh, this piece here around the contour and go down to the shop, use the English wheel a little bit to get a, a bend down here and uh, see how that comes out. But for right now, it's time to meet around the daycare, grab the kiddos. So that means I'll come back later. Well, the kids are in bed. The wife is trying to relax and get ready for a girl's weekend. So what better time to bust out the angle grinder than right now? Let's go ahead, get this thing cut off and see where we're at. Well, that wasn't the cleanest cut in the world by far, but you can definitely see what I suspected. There's two layers of metal in here. And they're both kind of huh, rotten. Let's go over to the uh, fender and take a look. So definitely not the cleanest cut, but it was, I think it was because I was up kind of high and couldn't get a good view of what I was cutting. Uh, but looks like one last piece of double metal right here, if I can focus. But here we're at, uh, yep, here we've got just one, one layer of metal uh, going over into here. We have some round, some little round rod. Come on, focus. No? Okay. There we go. A little bit of round rod uh, right at the bottom of this roll. And my tape. One layer that looks like so. Looks like the old stuff I've gotten off and we're just left with what well, looks like decent metal now. This of course will get uh, cleaned off, leveled off more uh, and whatnot. So that's, uh, it's good that we're down to some clean metal right here. I'm gonna hit this with the, with the uh, flap disc, see how that cleans up. But overall, this area, it looks pretty good. I'm, uh, I'm kind of uh, happy with how this looks. Now, the fun part is we have to recreate this. Now, this top piece here where the bolts are, yeah, that I can cut off and trace a new piece on. Um, if it weren't for the fact there is still more rusted metal here, I would just cut about an inch up, up from here and put on new metal and put this stuff back on. But we're just gonna make, uh, make life difficult for ourselves and uh, make everything new. All right, let me go ahead and clean off this fender a little more, get it cleaned up, see what we're looking at, and then we can look at uh, trying to recreate this, uh, this piece. All righty, well I've been going ahead and trying to fabricate or start fabricating a new uh, panel that goes in this area here. And I'm getting there slowly, not in a hurry. Why rush it? So 
we saw we cut off the old piece we're getting rid of. And I've started to go through and make a new piece and, uh, or half of it anyways, and attach it with good old Clecos. Now, hold on. If you're not familiar with these, you should be. I guess I can best equate them to temporary rivets. You've got a little pliers, special Clico device thing here, if I can focus on you. There we go. And it pops out, lets you put through your different layers of metal, retracts and puts tension on it and holds it all together like a nice little metal sandwich. I've got a couple of different types here. I've got these, I've got uh, kind of here you can just run by hand without the pliers. And then also more of a pair of teeth. Kind of looks like a T-Rex. Anyways, we've got these to hold on the new outer plate, the outer skin. And what that's gonna allow me to do is make a much more precise mark on the back of this new metal in order to trim and cut out uh, the exact lines I'm gonna be needing. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, trimming up where this plate goes here, along here. And then I've got some metal uh, cut out for this new uh, plate here where the running board attaches. So that's my next, my next thing to do is go ahead and uh, get this uh, plate tacked on in a few places and then set it in place back on the fender so we can make sure that this cut here that actually goes back and welds on here is where it needs to be so this line stays true and we have our new piece of metal that carries all the way over to there. That's perfect, right? Right. No. Anyways, it goes in there somehow. So that's what I'm working on right now. It's a lot of just fiddling, uh, test fitting back and forth, trimming things up. Nothing I'm really going to do a time lapse on because honestly, it's boring. But when it gets done, it's going to be nice to look at. And really the only thing that I need to do I've got to figure out how to do is roll this end. So I've got to put a piece of rod in here, probably just going to hammer it over and uh, pinch it in there and that's going to be it. So again, we're just going to work through things here. I'm going to be doing a bunch of things off camera just because they're tedious and you're not going to want to sit and watch them. But I will certainly come back when I get done with some milestones here and uh, show you what I've got going on. And I thought this was a pretty good milestone to show you that I've got the first uh, outer skin cut out and temporarily click out in place. So now we can go ahead and work on getting our uh, mounting, uh, not a bracket, just metal, uh, figured out where that goes for the running boards and get that in place. So. That's where we're off to for the next step. For me, time for bed, so welcome back tomorrow. Tomorrow for sure. Alrighty, new day for me, and uh, I've gone ahead, put a few more, more precise markings on our new uh, metal piece for our fender. And as you can see now, clock behind me is three o'clock. I've got a few minutes before I've got to run and go to daycare. And by the monitor behind me, if you can see, the battery in the 52 is dead, it's, well, it's going on 10 years. I think it's eight years old and uh, went to go bring it up to the garage. Nothing. Had like two volts. So last ditch to see if I can get it uh, recovered just to get the car up here and start thawing out. But I think I'm also taking some time today to run to O'Reilly's, grab a new battery. These don't have the go handle on them, unfortunately. Um, and I also got to get a bunch of diesel. So it's just a whole myriad of errands and not much actual work getting done. So I'm going to shut up and start working. I'm um, cutting off uh, up here, kind of all the lines around here except the very bottom one, because this is the one that I want to leave for last, because that's the one that's going to mate up to where we've already cut uh, on the fender. So 
This, uh, this line here represents where that uh, other plate mates up and welds on to get tied into the running boards. So I'm just gonna go ahead, uh, bust out the angle grinder and try and be as precise as I can with these cuts. Uh, I'm not gonna time lapse it because it's gonna take a while and it's boring. Well, it is later in the evening, you know, as you would expect. And after a little more fiddling and fabricating and clecoing and trimming, I've got the, I've got the new kind of skin built for this here. And uh, taking into consideration that this gets dropped down a little bit so I can tack this back on uh, where it should be in reference to where the old piece uh, was. So basically, I've kind of got this as an old template or a shell to use to uh, start welding the new piece together. And then I can just go ahead and trim off um, along these lines once everything is welded in place. So my plan is to take and just put a couple of tacks along here. I'll sandwich these things down. That's not a big deal. Uh, but go ahead and get these things tacked in a few places, then remove it from the old piece of metal and then work on uh, welding along the inside. And that should give me a nice edge on the outside here to uh, grind off and weld, put a nice little uh, chamfer on it, 45, whatever you want to call it, uh, to make it look like it was never fixed or touched. And then this old scrappy garbage piece can go away. That's going to leave us with just figuring out how to do this roll on the end here. I've got to find some round stock and uh, make that work. So let's just get to it. Well, here's the first pass at the new piece of metal thing. Uh, so basically, like I said, I got a bunch of tack welds in place to hold it. They're not pretty yet, but they will be because I'm apparently a much better grinder than I'm a welder. Um, you know, which for this case will be just fine. Um, I'm actually gonna go ahead and try and lay the welds on the inside of here so that uh, I'll have a good, uh, surface on the outside of here to uh, grind down and not have to grind over a bunch of welds and have them pop off and have to re-weld stuff. So uh, hopefully going along the inside of here is gonna work for me quite well. And once I get that buttoned up, um, I can start fitting it back in place on the car and uh, grinding down both uh, this edge here and this edge here. And this is the edge that actually Yep, this is the edge that actually mates up against the existing fender. So uh, that's what we're gonna take a lot of time and make sure that it does fit in right. And then of course, rolling over this top edge here. And there is just a little, right here, a little uh, whoop in the metal. So I've gotta figure out how to put that in there. Maybe I should have done that ahead of time, but who knows. And other than, well then, a couple of holes I made for my Clecos, this is looking pretty good so far. I went, over, I went over real quick and just, you know, set it where it should roughly go. And it looks like it's gonna work for us pretty good. So my next step is to go ahead and get all the rest of the welding done on here and get it cleaned up nice and pretty. So it looks like one piece of metal. And then we'll come back and uh, work on fitting it back to the vehicle. Okay, so this first piece I've been working on I just was not happy with how it was coming out. And luckily I was able to pick up a sheet of uh, metal from the owner of the car. So I'm working on version two of this. Uh, mainly I wanna make sure that this roll gets a little better. I went out and got some 316s round bar. So that's gonna help uh, with the new metal. I can actually make this top uh, plate in one piece versus two. And just overall, I think I have learned enough doing this first piece here, uh, how to do it better the second time around. And uh, it should hopefully look better. So I'm gonna take some time, get that done. 
We'll come back with the next video so it doesn't get too drawn out here and uh, put it on the car, do a test fit, trim it up, and then we'll do our final welding to get it back onto the uh, fender itself. That being said, we are going to run for now. We'll come back with the next episode, uh, finish us off. Thanks for watching. If you like, uh, you know, old cars or other cars, if you haven't yet, hit subscribe. And we'll see you all real soon. Bye-bye. Having said that, yeah, learning, fabricating, figuring out what works best, what doesn't. You don't always get it right the first time. This is a great case of that. And uh, again, I'm learning, and I hope you learn every day as well. Now I'm gone.